K.O. returns to flesh and blood, wounded but all the fiercer for it. He is a young brute hero with 4 intellect and 20 health that says you may have one weapon zone. Attack action cards you own get plus one attack while they are in any zone other than the combat chain. He also says the first time you discard a card with six or more attack during each of your action phases, you create a might token, which pops at the beginning of your turn and gives your next attack that turn plus one power. Peo is all about swinging big attacks and putting big numbers on the combat chain. He does this off of the back of power cards like Wild Ride and Bear Fangs, but even innocuous cards like Rising Power can put in work when you activate the draw and discard effect available within the deck and even on his weapon. Mini Medax. So let's dive in and look at how his deck is constructed. So of course taking a look at KO and understanding his ability creates a might token on discard of a six or greater. The Mini Medax is a nice little trigger for that. You can swing this pitching two resources and uh, trigger that draw and discard. If you hit a uh, six then you get to create a might token. And uh, it's just attacks for three. But if it's attacking with a might token you're feeling pretty good attacking for four. Flat Tracker is fantastic for creating agility and go wide turns. Gauntlet of Might for creating the Might, and the Raw Meat is huge for making a big block at the right time, especially if you decide to pop both of your equipments to make this block for two as a temper equipment. And then of course, Knucklehead, a, just a fantastic blocking card, and you could roll a six-sided die to try and get more intellect, but at, after all, this does block for three as well. So just using it for the three block is fantastic. And here's the deck split out into its various costs. These are the only cards that cost nothing. They are instants. You can play them at uh, instant speed. Uh, these cards all cost one. There are eight of them. I think there are 16 different reds, yellows that all cost two. And then a large number over here, 14 that cost three. So here we have the deck arranged in its pitch colors. We've got 18 reds, so clearly a red heavy deck. Uh, yellows equal to 12 and then blues to 10. Uh, these are clearly our pitch cards compared to what we are trying to play. And there are a lot of good playables in the yellow slots as well. But as you can see, a lot of these cards are going to be our powerhouses. Let's dive into those first. These 10 cards are your most powerful cards in the deck. These are really the cards you want to be playing on big swing turns and to push damage with. You have Wild Ride. Uh, when this attacks, draw a card, then discard a random card. If you hit a six, this gets go again. So essentially you're paying for this, drawing and discarding, creating a might token, and then pushing more damage, hopefully after the fact. So put this into the arsenal, keep a five card hand total, and then send Wild Ride to kick things off. And then of course, Bear Fangs as well, a very powerful option. When this attacks, draw a card, discard a random card, and then if you discard a six, you get plus two on the attack. Combine these with Might tokens, and these things can get really big really fast. And then of course, combine Bear Fangs with Agility, and you've basically got another copy of Wild Ride in the deck. So. Those eight cards, plus down but not out, make up the really big, powerful swings of the deck. To truly play this deck to its best of its ability, find these cards, line them up with a four-card hand, or put them in arsenal and play a five-card hand, counting that in your arsenal, and try to send big damage, discarding, creating might tokens and throwing lots of numbers at your opponents. Lead with speed and lead with power are also very important cards to keep in mind when playing this deck out. Both of them give a buff and immediately create the token for next turn, which means if you play lead with speed, you're giving plus three and making that agility token, which will give go again to one of your attacks, meaning you can set up a turn very similar to Wild Ride simply by playing lead with speed. Then any of your big attacks, any of these like Bear Fangs or even Down But Not Out can have go again. Even your vanilla attacks, Rising Power, can all of a sudden threaten a whole lot of damage. So that number goes up and up and you can push big, big numbers at your opponents. Rally the Rear Guards and Run Into Trouble make up more of a defensive package within the deck. Technically, these cards do count as playable attacks. You can throw them out there and they can deal some damage but you can also use them for their effect. Once per turn, as an instant, you can discard a card, and then this card, while it's blocking, will gain plus three. So if, in effect, these become a block five at the cost of a card, which is 
quite cool and very flexible for a deck that does run some no block cards. Run Into Trouble is very similar. It is a block card, meaning you can block with it in the uh, blocking phase. You can only block with it then. You can't react with it. But if you defend with this in the blocking phase and you control an agility token, then you deal one damage to the attacking hero. So in a way, it's like pure damage that your opponent can't stop. And finally, we have these agile cards over here. Agile windups are very good in this deck simply because you can discard them at instant speed from your hand to create an agility token. And the red and the yellow both attack for six and seven respectively, which is quite good. And the blue even discards off of the top at random uh, to hit the six effect to trigger KO's effect. So all of them play a huge role in allowing you to push multiple attacks on a turn uh, by discarding and also act, you know, very flexibly to attack as well. And the rest of the deck here is uh, basically just the glue that continues to hold everything together. We've got yellow and red pack calls, both of which are buffed by KO's effect and act as sixes when discarded. Uh, technically, when you defend with them, you also get this effect where you look at the top of the deck. And if it has six or more power, you put it back. Otherwise, it goes to the bottom. And this can get you out of a jam if you end up finding off the top of your deck one of your lead with like uh, mites or lead with speeds. If you find one of those, a lead with power or lead with speed, then uh, you can just bottom them to the, the bottom of the deck and you're more likely to hit off the top from a random discard effect. And of course, Mighty Windup, similar effect. It attacks for uh, five, it costs three. You can discard it to create a mite token at instant speed and it uh, meets the requirement of being discarded by being buffed by KO's effect. So let's play out a few sample turns with this Blitz deck. As we draw our cards, we're gonna start things off drawing our four cards for our turn and for the game. And uh, we'll find a red lead with speed. That's a great card to find pretty early on. Rising power, pack call blue, and oh my gosh, and a bear fangs as well. Okay, we have some options here. Uh, I really like the idea of trying to set up for a five card hand and a power turn. And the way we could do that would be to play a lead with speed using pack call as our resources. So that would mean that we would uh, have two resources left. And this would give plus three to our warrior or, uh, or brute attack. We are not a warrior, we are a brute. And it creates an agility token, which feels quite nice. From that point, we are going to play out this rising power. And it looks pretty innocuous, but it actually comes for a nice solid eight damage thanks to the uh, buff from the lead with speed. And what this allows us to do is not just threaten eight damage, but also place bear fangs into the arsenal for next turn. So if our opponent takes some amount of damage or gives us some cards, then we can pass over nicely and easily and draw up. So let's see what we draw into, see if we can have a power turn. Lead with power, okay, wild ride feels good. Ah, okay, we have some good cards. Now it's not a very good blocking hand, as you can see two of these cards do not have block values, but if we hold on to it, then we might be able to have some big fireworks on this turn. Agility pops, and it means that we can start with bear fangs from arsenal. And let's see if we hit, we have to randomly draw and discard. So the card we randomly draw, ah, nice, is going to be a success, which means all of these cards are a success. Yes, they say five down at the bottom. It's not gonna matter because remember, KO makes them all sixes. So whichever one we end up discarding is sort of irrelevant. It just means how many resources we have since we have yellows and reds. So if we roll a die and we get a three, we discard a wild ride. Would have been nice to have that wild ride, but that's okay. We have other things to follow up with. And it means that Bear Fangs attacks for eight which is good, and it means that we create a might token as well. So attacking for eight means our opponent has to deal with it, and then we can just do the entire like thing again by sending rising power uh, and then paying with rally the rear guard. And in doing so, we're sending for seven because technically we drew a card off of the effect here. We drew a card and discarded a card. So we represented 15 damage on this turn, and we get to arsenal another bear fangs. And the, the cool thing about this is you can kind of do it all again next turn. And some final tips, keep in mind that the discard effects within this deck are going to slowly but surely push you into a fatigue state. If you run out of cards because you're discarding cards and playing cards, your opponent could recognize that and play towards that. So 
stack up your big cards for big turns. Try to line up Bear Fangs and Wild Rides onto a five card hand type turn so you can push over the defenses and really kill your opponent before they have a chance to run you out of cards. And also keep in mind that there are a ton of little synergies towards that discard mechanic and that might generation mechanic on KO's effect. So if you toss an agile wind up on your opponent's turn, you create that uh, agility token because of its effect, but you're also discarding a card, which is a six power card. So you get the might token trigger on KO as well. And if you discard the uh, mighty wind up, then you actually get two might tokens, one from the effect and one from KO's effect. So there are ways to stack up damage and uh, really stack up those tokens as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something on how to play this wonderful Blitz deck and this insane new hero. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna support the channel and see more stuff like this, please consider becoming a patron. Anyone that's a patron really supports this channel and really kind of pushes this channel onward and upward into greatness. And uh, if you wanna press a button to make a number go slightly higher in 200 subscribers, we're going to open an Arcane Rising 1st Edition box. And you may end up winning a pack on me from that box break. So press the button, make it go slightly higher, and we'll have some good times. As always, thanks for watching.